In 2004, a campy teenage movie begins with Terry singing joy to the world with other choir members. Fletcher, who aspires to be a professional singer and is from Arizona, reminds Terry about tomorrow's rehearsal. Meanwhile, her dorky friend Matthew, who seems to have a crush on her, tries to sell concert tickets. Terry and her friend laugh it off. The summer starts with the high school kids promising to have fun. Terry's brother, Paul, is interested in Terry's friend. He is graduating and is supposed to have dinner, but misses out on it to see other people. He asks them to save him a barbecue burger. They enter Flagstaff and return home. The Fletchers run a restaurant, but don't approve of Terry's dreams and plans. She wants to sing in the choir, but also dreams of attending a music summer program in Los Angeles, which her father strongly opposes due to his protective nature. Terry defends the Los Angeles program, claiming it's the best in the country, and reveals that she already sent an application and demo. Her aunt Nina supports her, while Paul arrives and notices Terry's sadness. Nina scolds Paul for upsetting his sister. Terry's dad is concerned about letting her go to Los Angeles at just 16, fearing for her safety. Paul argues with their dad, insulting him for wanting to keep everyone stuck in Arizona. Their mom intervenes, urging them not to argue and to focus on celebrating. Paul decides to liven things up by using a spray to create a fire for the barbecue. He then gets into Arizona State University, and promises Aunt Nina to ensure Terry gets into the music program, sealing it with a handshake. Later, Paul films Terry practicing and composing songs while hanging out with her. Back in Paul's room, he edits the footage, creating a music video compilation of Terry's singing and piano playing. He burns the videos onto a CD and mails it, hoping to help Terry get into the music program. Terry visits Paul's room to give him graduation presents, including concert tickets for that night. However, Paul is grounded, but he sneaks out to mail the demo. Terry encourages him to break the rules as he always does, and they sneak out while Aunt Nina watches from above, aware of their escape. Paul confides in Terry that he plans to stay in Phoenix and not live in Flagstaff anymore, because of the strained relationship with their dad. He feels bad about leaving Terry behind, but he encourages her to explore the world. They then go to a rock concert featuring Three Days Grace. The concert gets the audience wild, and Paul and a friend lift Terry up so she can get a better view, and even touch the hand of the band's vocalist. On the way home they continue singing, but at an intersection, a truck is about to collide with theirs. Terry sees a white flash from the truck before the light consumes Paul, who looks at her with worry. He swerves to the right, trying to avoid the collision so he will get the impact, and not Terry. The scene transitions to the hospital, where Terry is hooked up to various machines after waking up from a coma. Her mom is initially calm when Terry wakes up, but her emotions take over and she starts crying. Her tears hold a dual meaning, reflecting both happiness that Terry survived, and a realization that she needs to share something terrible about Paul. In the hospital, the doctor checks on Terry, asking her questions to assess her memory, such as her birthday and the current month. Simon, the tough and protective father, is present. Terry answers the questions correctly, but when the doctor attempts to check her with a flashlight, she panics and screams. The glaring white light triggers traumatic memories of the truck collision. Simon intervenes, believing the doctor may harm her, and embraces his daughter, helping her calm down. The devastating reality sets in as Paul is buried and depression hangs heavily over the Fletcher house. The grief affects everyone, and Terry's friend also feels the weight of the tragedy. They continue to attend church mass, but Terry has lost interest in singing and the choir. Simon chooses to shut off Paul's room, leaving it untouched as a reminder of how it was before Paul, and Terry left the house. One day Terry goes to get the mail, and as she goes through it, she comes across a letter from Bristol Hillman addressed to her. When she opens it, she discovers that she has been accepted into the music school program. Instead of feeling joyful about this achievement, she shrugs it off as if it's nothing. Terry goes to her part-time job at the family restaurant. Aunt Nina and Mom give her back the acceptance letter that she threw in the trash. Mom asks why she discarded it, and Nina is seen celebrating the acceptance. Terry is hesitant to feel proud, because if Paul were there, it would lead to another fight with their dad. When asked if she wants to go to the music school program, Terry claims that she doesn't even want to sing anymore. However, Nina doesn't believe her and promises to handle Simon, their dad, so he will agree to let Terry go. Nina suggests to Simon that Terry should go with her to Palm Desert, as she needs to get away. But Simon is reluctant, mentioning that it's for a month, and he feels it may not be safe for her. He also worries that there won't be anyone to help at the restaurant during her absence. Nina emphasizes the importance of the restaurant, but Terry feels conflicted because she has never lied to her dad before, and now Nina is having to lie to Simon. Nina reveals to Terry that Simon and his friend got scholarships to UCLI as football players. While the restaurant is essential to them, their parents' health is not in good condition. Neither of them actually wanted to run the restaurant, but Simon felt a sense of obligation to take it on. Unfortunately, his friend got involved in bad things in Los Angeles, which has made Simon stricter with his children, trying to protect them from similar issues. Nina advises Terry to just grab it and don't be afraid, because it is what Paul would have wanted. 
and it is still Terry's decision. In the next morning, Terry hears her mom crying in the other room as she has to pack Paul's clothes away. Terry enters Paul's room and comforts her mom, putting an end to her tears. She looks through Paul's belongings, including the crucifix necklace. Terry has been blaming herself for forcing Paul to sneak out that night. Terry feels guilty about lying to dad, but her mom assures her that she had to do it to protect Terry's happiness. Her mom promises to tell dad the truth when the time is right, which convinces Terry to go to the music program. Before leaving, dad hands her a wad of cash, and her mom drives her to Los Angeles instead of Palm Desert, where Nina is supposed to be. As they depart, her mom drops her off at the station, and they come up with a plan to ensure Simon won't discover anything. Arriving in Los Angeles, Terry finally hails a taxi, but unfortunately someone took her jacket, which had her money in it. The taxi driver warmly welcomes Terry to Los Angeles as they drive around, showing her both the bright and dark sides of the city. They arrive at the music conservatory late at night, but unfortunately, it appears to be locked. Terry is left standing outside, feeling stranded. Eventually, a boy named Jay comes along, opens the door, and then playfully closes it again, joking around with her. Jay asks for a password to get inside, and they introduce themselves to each other. Inside, Terry attempts to befriend two girls, but they turn out to be snobbish, so she decides to explore on her own. Jay walks away, having a disagreement with the girls. Terry then enters her room, but her new roommate doesn't seem very welcoming. Feeling a bit uncomfortable, she steps out to make a phone call and discovers a veranda with a picturesque view of the city, which amazes her. Terry calls her cool aunt Nina, who takes a break from welding to answer. Nina is worried because Simon, Terry's dad, has called twice already. So, to create the illusion that they are together, they call dad for a conference call. This way, it seems like Nina and Terry are in each other's company, trying to alleviate Simon's concerns. Dad and Mom both answer the phones during the conference call with Aunt Nina and Terry. Nina explains that the train was late, providing a reason for their delay. When Dad asks what they plan to do, Nina and Terry suggest different things, eating dinner or watching TV. Dad points out that Nina doesn't have a TV, because it goes against her artistic nature. However, Nina lies, claiming she finally got one. Simon warns Nina not to corrupt Terry. The lie seems to work, supporting their cover story. Later that night, Terry goes outside and talks to the moon, imagining it is Paul. While there, she notices a fellow student playing the saxophone. The next morning in Sunnyside, London, Terry meets her roommate Denise. Classes begin, and they witness a quartet playing Vivaldi. The song takes a modern twist when a talented cellist, Cielo, adds his unique touch to it. They are surprised to realize that the talented musicians are their new teachers. During the orientation, the host informs them that many people applied, but not everyone was accepted. He encourages them to find their own voice during the summer program. He explains the rules, regulations, and curfew, emphasizing that they must travel in pairs for safety. He also mentions a grand scholarship study with a $10,000 prize for the best final performances. After the orientation, they head to their respective classes with their enigmatic teachers. Terry's first class is with Mr. Torvald, focusing on studying choral pieces. Then Mr. Torvald starts teaching and announces that they will be doing solos. He is a high-energy teacher, and the students begin to group up. Jay and the other students showcase their musical talents, playing various instruments and displaying their exceptional vocals. Terry tries to make friends, but it seems that many of the students are introverted and not very social. When she makes eye contact with Jay, the jealous girl from before gives her a disapproving look. In another class, they have to decipher notes from a seemingly foreign maestro. Terry almost answers correctly, but she stumbles and makes a mistake. At that moment, she meets Johnny, who reveals that he intentionally tripped her to record her voice. Johnny actually has a crush on Sloane, the reserved loner girl in the group. Terry's roommate, Denise, seems upset, and Terry notices that Denise doesn't seem to like her. Denise explains that she is simply very focused on snagging the scholarship, and she doesn't want to get close to anyone because all the students are competing for it. Terry understands and realizes that it's not personal. Robin appears to be sucking up to the teachers, including Mr. Torvald, in order to gain favor and earn more brownie points. However, during the choral something goes wrong, and Mr. Torvald has to cut the performance short. He recognizes Terry from a DVD, but she is unsure of what he's referring to. After being lectured, Mr. Torvald seems to appreciate Robin more than Terry. During the piano class, Sloane shows exceptional skill, and then it's Denise's turn with the violin. Terry pretends to forget her books and goes to Mr. Wesson, who asks her to recite the first page. Unfortunately, Terry's voice isn't as good as before, due to lack of practice. Mr. Wesson lectures her on how to find her voice, but she feels like she's losing it. Feeling out of touch with everyone's musical talent around her, she retreats to a room to watch Sloan play. The next morning, Terry talks to Johnny and shows him a song she edited with her own voice and various instruments. However, Sloane seems absorbed in her own world and doesn't notice. Terry then visits a church in Los Angeles and reminisces about her brother Paul. Jay sees her and asks what she's doing. Terry explains that it's a lucky ritual, and Jay joins in, grabbing the nickel to be lucky too. They spend time appreciating musicians around the city, 
and Jay asks more about Terry's life. Suddenly Denise calls Terry, but Jay quickly avoids the situation. Denise confirms that Jay likes to hit on nice girls, and as a result, Denise and Terry start to become friends. Later, Denise starts busking, playing a more modernized violin performance. During her performance, Terry's mom Frances calls, and wants to talk to Simon. In a panic, Terry lies that the sirens blaring in the background are just the neighbor's alarm. She has to abruptly end the call to avoid getting caught in her lie. During the chorals, Terry attempts to sing the solo but struggles to hit the high note. Robin, sensing Terry's struggle, hints that she can hit the note and suggests that Terry should practice more. Mr. Torvald inquires about what Terry did with the girl on the DVD, but Terry lies, claiming that she sent her own recording on a CD. However, the truth is that the DVD was the reason she got accepted. Mr. Torvald plays the DVD and discovers that it was Paul who sent it, using recordings from his video cameras. Watching the video montage of her brother, Terry becomes overwhelmed with emotion and runs away crying. Jay follows her. In her room, Terry packs her things, but her necklace breaks in the process. Jay enters her room and insists that she can't leave. Jay manages to convince Terry to escape for a while and takes her to the bay. Terry opens up about the tragic accident and reveals that she still blames herself for Paul's loss, which is one of the reasons why she can't sing properly. Jay reassures her, saying that it wasn't her fault, it was just an idiot who ran a red light. He encourages her to enjoy singing and do it for herself. Terry feels Jay is being too nice, but he confesses that he likes her, even though Terry brings up Robin. Jay assures her that he and Robin are in the past, and takes Terry to his side. They play together at the shore. During the chorals, the girl also struggles to hit the notes. When it's Terry's turn, she still can't hit the high notes, so she improvises with the melody. Mr. Torvald steals the spotlight away from Robin, and everyone appreciates Terry's unique approach more now. Now, Terry thoroughly enjoys the choral experience. When Mr. Wesson suggests changing the composition, Terry insists on sticking to the same one. She starts singing, and this time she does it correctly, earning Mr. Wesson's approval. In the auditorium, Jay plays the piano and sings, but suddenly stops. Terry is about to walk away, but Jay confesses that he feels odd about his writing, and considers it lame. However, Terry disagrees, saying her own compositions are worse than Jay's. She encourages him to play something for her, pushing him to share. Jay takes her advice and begins playing and singing his own composition. Terry reads through it, providing constructive criticism and making some suggestions to improve it. Kiwi later joins Terry and Jay at the playground, and confesses that he is head over heels in love with Sloane. They all agree that Sloane is an incredibly talented girl who plays flawlessly. Terry promises to help Kiwi talk to Sloane, and suggests striking up a friendship with her. She goes to the piano room and introduces herself to Sloane. Terry mentions that Kiwi likes her, and wonders if they can hang out. Sloane finds Kiwi's name weird, and asks why he has a crush on her. Terry invites Sloane to grab a bite to eat, and Sloane agrees, but then she resumes playing the piano. Terry assures Kiwi that it's okay, and he's in. Later, Denise confides in Terry about her relationship with Jay, revealing that they are an item. Denise also mentions that she has nice clothes because her mom works in a clothing shop. She gives Terry a dress and helps her fit into it. Meanwhile, back in Arizona, Frances sees a note from Simon to go to Nina's place and check on Terry. Nina calls and tells her to come over. The situation is stressing her out, but suddenly Terry sees Jay, and they use his car to rush to Nina's place just before Simon arrives. Terry arrives and rushes to the station, catching a train to her aunt's magnificent place in Palm Desert. She runs to Nina's home, but Simon arrives first, causing Nina to panic. Fortunately, Terry makes it just in time before Nina reveals the lie. However, there's another problem, because they are supposed to have dinner that night. Sloane comes out wearing a Victorian dress, and despite some initial awkwardness, the boys and Terry compliment her appearance. They venture out into the city and find Denise busking. Terry amusingly confesses a little crime she just committed to them. During Denise's performance, Terry joins in and starts singing. Later on, Terry persuades the others to join her and they all sing together, even Sloane enjoying the moment. More talented people join them, including a street actor, and the crowd is amused, dropping cash as appreciation. Jay and Terry then go up to the rooftop and admire the view together. Jay takes Terry dancing on the rooftop, and as they dance slowly, Jay tries to kiss her, but she dodges it playfully. They both confess their feelings for each other, and Jay suggests that they collaborate and aim to get the scholarship together, splitting it. Terry finally allows Jay to kiss her, and they share a tender moment. Now a couple, Jay and Terry collaborate on a song and practice together. Later, with their friends Kiwi and Denise, they go to a music bar where they witness a performer being booed. Their plan for being there is to show their composition as a dry run. Jay and Terry go up on the stage, and Terry starts singing. However, her voice starts getting caught in the middle, and she becomes overwhelmed. The lights in the music bar remind her of the accident, and she suddenly runs away. Jay chases after her to comfort her, and Terry is on the verge of tears. To comfort her, Jay gives her the now-fixed cross pendant that belonged to Paul. 
Terry kisses him in gratitude for his understanding and support. During the choral class, Mr. Torvald comments on their improvement, but Terry is missing for a bit. Robin becomes upset, throwing a fit and claiming that Terry doesn't deserve the solo, and that Robin deserves it more, as she can sing better than Terry. Mr. Torvald believes that Terry is capable of doing a solo. Terry walks out crying, and starts banging on a vending machine until Jay finds her. Robin tells Jay that everything seemed great, but now it's all falling apart. She asks Jay to talk privately, and they do so. When Terry returns, she tells Mr. Torvald that she can't do the solo, and that there are better singers for the role. Mr. Torvald doesn't accept that as an answer, saying she's throwing away what she has worked hard for, and he leaves. In the piano room, Robin and Jay talk together. Robin admits that she always gets her way, and urges Jay to get back together with her, knowing he likes bad girls. However, Terry arrives and catches Robin in the act, kissing Jay. Terry runs away and Jay chases after her, shouting at Robin to stay away. Terry rips up the composition and cries her heart out. She walks alone, feeling sad, and finds herself in the perfect view of the sunset. Jay tries to talk to Terry, but she won't let him and instead, she focuses on her own music. Meanwhile, Jay has to start from scratch again, since they broke up. Later, Mr. Torvald and Terry have a talk. Terry asks him if he ever lost someone. Mr. Torvald offers his ear for listening, and says that losing is a part of the process of being an artist. He explains that pursuing music is about emotions, so it's more important to take what's in the heart and soul. In the middle of the night, while sleeping, someone suddenly bangs on their door. It turns out to be Jay. Denise tells him to go away, as Jay seems drunk and just wants to talk. He forces himself in, and explains that Robin kissed him. Jay insists that he cares about Terry, not Robin, and convinces her that he is serious. However, Jay becomes self-pitying due to his drunken state, and he can't walk properly. Denise and Terry carry him to the roof to let him sober up, and Denise leaves them alone. They spend the night on the roof until the morning light, but Jay is still not fully awake. He apologizes, but Terry is not ready to forgive him just yet. Another problem arises when Simon starts looking for the car keys and discovers Francis's invitation for the school program at Bristol School, where Terry got accepted. Simon becomes angry and calls out his wife for lying to him. Despite the situation, Jay and Terry continue to collaborate on their music. Terry practices, but her voice is still not where she wants it to be. Simon confronts Francis about Terry's acceptance, feeling betrayed by their lies. Francis explains that it was the only way to allow Terry to pursue her dreams, fearing they might lose her if they didn't support her. However, Simon is adamant about having Terry come home so he can protect her. Meanwhile, Sloane is practicing the piano, and Kiwi is making annoying sounds that irritate her. Sloane confronts him and shouts at him, calling him rude. However, it turns out to be a ploy by Kiwi to get her attention, and he kisses her. At first, Sloane is shocked, but then she smiles and continues kissing Kiwi. Jay and Terry, along with all the other students, are working hard and feeling the pressure to perfect their performances. On the day of the performances, Terry realizes that she forgot to wear her necklace, which she cannot perform without. She leaves during Robin's pop-style performance and goes back to her room, where Simon is packing her things. Simon is not willing to listen to Terry. Terry finally opens up to Simon, revealing that they all lied because they were afraid of him, and how he would react if he knew the truth. She tells him that choosing to perform at the program is the best thing that has happened to her. After convincing him, Simon agrees to let her perform, because he sees how hard she has worked for it. Then it's Denise's turn for her rough twist on the violin recital. Next up are Jay and Terry, but Terry is not there yet. Jay has to inform the host, but Terry arrives just in time. She sees the spotlight, and is momentarily reminded of her brother Paul, but instead of being scared, she talks to the crowd and dedicates the song to him. Jay and Terry perform flawlessly, and Terry's voice no longer cheeps. Simon seems to overcome his feelings of betrayal, and smiles at Terry's performance. They receive a round of applause. Finally, the judges decide on the winner of the $10 K scholarship, which goes to Denise Gilmore. The Fletchers are very proud of her. Simon talks to Terry and admits that he was wrong, saying it was the proudest moment of his life seeing her up there. Mr. Torvald hopes to see her next year, and Simon agrees. Terry and the rest of the students continue to perform street music once more. 